Hello, my name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Woe. So this is my 1000 subscriber Q&A and giveaway video. To celebrate, I decided that we would do a q and I wasn't sure, but I got the feedback that you guys wanted that and I actually got way more questions than I thought that I would. So yeah, you guys actually had some questions for me, which is great. And then I'm also doing a little giveaway as a thank you. Um, and I will talk about that at the end. So let's start with the questions and then we'll get into the giveaway. Okay, so I broke this into three group groupings of questions. First personal, then books slash booktube. Third questions about Agatha Christie. So starting with personal, um, the first question I have is how are you liking your new town slash house? And this is a very valid question. This is from Andy Nicole, because you guys had to listen to me bitching about that for, uh, you know, six weeks or whatever. I absolutely love it. So I moved from Charlotte to Nashville. Um, I'm originally from Tennessee. So this was a really, this is a good move in terms of just like being a little closer to my family, because there's been some health issues in our family. So I'm a little closer for when I need to be around to help out with that. And I'm also so just you know closer to my nieces and stuff but I have a ton of friends in Nashville like I said I'm from Tennessee originally so um, this was like a very natural move for me and it's a good balance of it's a big city um, that is a little bit more progressive than other parts of Tennessee which is good for me but it's also you know got a lot of the kind of like comforts of home type things so I'm really enjoying being here I absolutely love where I live I happen to be in like the coolest neighborhood in Nashville just because I, I was trying to find something close to work and I absolutely love my neighborhood I can walk every Everywhere. Um, I was watching Parts Unknown, Anthony Bourdain's show about Nashville, and I was like, oh, I that that's the booth I sat in last night. Oh, I walk there for this. Like half of that show was set in my neighborhood. So anyway, it's just a super fun place to live. I love the actual house I have, and yeah, it's just been a really good move. Okay, and then Brie Hill, who was like the champion of this Q&A, by the way, she asked me so many great questions. Um, the first one was, uh, it's Saturday night and we're having movie night at your place. What three movies have you rented for us to watch? Um, that is such a fun question. Okay, so first, if you have never seen Clue, we're watching Clue, but if you've seen Clue, because hopefully you've gotten your act together, um, we would watch Murder by Death, which is also a fun, like, comedic murder mystery thing. If you've never seen Murder on the Orient Express, I'm gonna make you watch the 1970 version of that. You know, very on brand for me. And then third, we would watch Paris is Burning because it is the best documentary I've ever seen. It's only like 70 minutes long and it, I have never seen something that packs so much like things to think about in terms of like race, class, gender, sexuality, all that stuff. And then the ending, like, could, like it couldn't be scripted better. I mean, if you know the ending, I don't mean that it was good. I just mean like, what an ending. So anyway, those would be those three movies, I think. Yeah, ooh, that would be, that'd be a good night. We would have to get some popcorn for that. And then the other question she asked in kind of a personal section is, if you hosted a podcast, what would it be about? I don't, oh, that's so hard because I adore podcasts. I listen to podcasts all day long. If I'm not listening to an audiobook, I am listening to a podcast. Right now, it would probably be about like keto, maybe, because I'm so into that. Like I'm doing so much research and stuff into that, so I would like to talk about it. Um, it could be about that. It could definitely be about books, though I have this already. I think in my heart of hearts, what I would love to be on would be something like the Slate Culture Gab Fest. Like, I love that show, and like being able to talk in like highbrow ways about lowbrow things that probably be like my dream podcasting situation. Okay, Leah Hyden Seek asks, you have commented a couple of times that you use reading for headspace reasons. I do too. What are the key books genres that you pick up when you need a bit of a mental health day? Sorry, I'm reading the questions on my computer. Oh, it really kind of just depends on why I need mental health day. <laughs> so sometimes I just like, I need to be reminded that like good things happen to people in this world and then I will pick up a romance. Sometimes I'm like having some sort of like existential angst or crisis about a certain like thought or belief or whatever. And in that case, I'm probably gonna pick up something like more philosophical or nonfiction related to like help me process that. Um, sometimes I just want to like, escape and if I'm doing that a lot of times like mystery is good for me so it really just sort of depends on like what the the underlying mental health thing I need is but I would say probably reliably those are the the three kind of groupings. Eamon Gilligan says you've mentioned before that you do your own writing just for yourself is writing to get published something you'd ever think about doing someday what sorts of themes do you enjoy exploring in your own work? 
Um, it's definitely I would think about, I think especially now. So when I was younger, a lot of what I wrote was like short stories, like Flannery O'Connor and Shirley, like not that I'm as good as those people, let's be clear, but Flannery O'Connor and Shirley Jackson were really big influences on me in terms of like the types of short stories I was writing and like the themes were very dark. <laughs> I think now I do a lot of like essay writing to kind of channel that. Um, and I do, I write research papers, guys, I'm such a nerd. But like, I really process things through writing, reading and writing is a huge way I kind of like interact with the thoughts in my head. Um, so I, I definitely write to process things. I don't know if that's something I would ever publish. Like in the last year, I've been writing a lot about like food and grief and, um, you know, like trauma and, kind of exploring that as I've been losing weight because yeah, I just, I think I've been made newly aware at even the, I'm, I mean, I'm still fat, but like I was fatter and even just the amount of privilege I now have as being less fat, I think that has like sparked a lot of thoughts. So like I've been writing a lot of essays about that and maybe that's something I would publish at some point if I thought it was, if I thought it was something that would be helpful to people, that would be something I might publish. The other thing is I um, now write a lot of like commercial things like that. I've never, I never was somebody who wrote novels until a couple of years ago. So I wrote a very short novel as a part of like my master's thing because I was trying to understand how the genre worked that I was exploring. Um, I was trying to like unpack it and make sure I understood the tropes and I really enjoyed that. And so yeah, like I've been writing a couple of like commercial fiction type books and those are things I would definitely think about getting published because I think they would be um, good enough to be published, if that makes sense. Um, so if I, if I write something that I think is like, yeah, this is good. Like I would read this, like I would, you know, I would enjoy this if it was on the shelves, then I think I would consider publishing it. I talk as if it's so easy, like, oh yeah, once I decide that I'm going to get published, it'll just happen. Cause that's how that works. <laughs> Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany says, could you talk about your master's thesis? Yes, I could. Um, so my master's is in religion and art basically. Um, and my areas of interest are women's studies, popular literature, and religion. And all of those things combined equals Christian romance. Now, have you ever seen these on the shelves? They are fascinating. So basically I grew up in a very fundamentalist context and like one of the things as a girl that I was allowed to read was were these Christian romances and I read a few of them and didn't enjoy them. This is why I read so many classics <laughs> instead. And like mysteries, those were other things I was allowed to read um, in the context of like, the school I was at. I always kind of wondered though, like, why is this a thing? Like, why, why are, like, what, what function do Christian romances serve um, in the evangelical community? Like, how do they function? Um, where do they come from? Blah, 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 blah. So basically, like, I didn't even write a full thesis on this, but I wrote, like, my final major project on this. And basically what I was doing was looking at some of the original texts from the romance genre in general, which are um, Jane Eyre and uh, Pride and Prejudice, like Jane Austen, basically. Those are, like, consistently cited as, like, the Ur texts of romance. If you're looking for a history of the romance, I highly recommend Pamela Regis's A Natural History of Romance. It's very, very good. Um, but I basically, I took Jane Eyre because I think of Victorian literature, it has one of the highest densities of references to scripture. And I would also, basically what I argued is that it's essentially an exploration of the Augustan idea of the will in terms of like duty versus passion um, and how those two things play out. So I was looking at that and saying like, okay, here's, here's a romance that has a lot of Christian themes in it. So like, Clearly this can be done well. How do we get from that to bonnet rippers? Like those are what I call all those crazy Amish romances. Um, so it was essentially like not even really exploring my original question. It, it was basically setting up the, essentially arguing that this is an area of study that needs to be further explored. Like that's even as far as I got because it was just a master's. If I'd gone on to do my PhD, like that was, likely one of the things that I probably would have ended up writing on was um, essentially like, how does this function? Like from a religious standpoint and like why, but also like as a literary genre, how does this function? What is it trying to accomplish? If that made any sense. And then the last uh, personal question was from Jenna Elizabeth. Are you still thinking of doing a keto video? Yes, I am definitely gonna do that. I wanna wait until I get around the year anniversary of doing it. Cause I wanna feel like I've done this for a year and I can talk about it. I also have a couple of like very key texts in the keto literary 
field um, that I have not read yet and I want to make sure I do that. Um, I really want to make it a very helpful video, I hope, in terms of people looking for books about keto. So that that is the goal and I want to make sure that I've, I've done my homework for that. So I would say look for that probably in October. But you know, if people have questions about keto in the meantime, always feel free to ask. Like I, you know, I get a lot of emails about keto or a lot of messages. So um, I'm happy to talk to you guys about that if that's something you're interested in or just generally like elimination of sugar from your diet. These are all things that I'm, I'm very interested in and do a lot of research on. So feel free to chat with me about that. Okay, moving into the book slash booktube questions. So first of all, I forgot to write down who, but several people um, have asked me to do the uh, makeup booktube tag. I will do that. I just need to figure out how, like where I am sitting right now is not very well situated to do makeup while I talk to you guys and then where I am well situated to do makeup doesn't have good lighting. So I just need to figure that out, but I will have that for you guys at some point. Moving into questions where I actually was good and wrote the person's name down. Maria G says, which three books do you consider to be a must read for every book lover? I think this is a really hard question because especially like the, the first place my mind goes is like, are we talking only English speaking novels? Are we talking only English speaking people? Like I have, I definitely don't feel like like I have enough knowledge to give recommendations for this for every single book lover. But I'm going to take this question in the spirit with which it was asked, I think, in terms of like, I'm going to acknowledge that I have limitations, but in terms of like English speaking novels that I'm aware of, which is primarily what I can speak to. Um, I mean, the two easiest ones would be Jane Eyre, uh, because that is my all time favorite book and the remains of the day because that's my second all time favorite book. Whew, picking the third one is a little harder. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just give you a kind of a cop out answer and say uh, Cards on the Table by Agatha Christie because I love Agatha Christie and um, that's my favorite book by her. So sure, let's go with that one. Okay, more questions from Brie Hill. If you could be the main character in a 2019 new release and you also got to pick the author, who would it be? I would be the main character in any book Alona Andrews wrote because her heroines are so awesome. Like what I love about those books, the, re the reason I love them is because they're kick-ass heroines. I hate that. I think I've talked about before why I hate that, but they're really strong characters. They're strong women and like they are women about their shit and I appreciate that. And the way that they do tension in those books is not to give the main characters like these like insecurities or flaws or whatever like the main characters are usually like very strong very competent people the way that conflict is created is that they create huge obstacles that these awesome characters have to overcome through like their wit and oh, that sounds great also i mean like the heroes that she writes in those books like I wouldn't kick them out of bed for eating crackers. So like, I know she would have my back there too. Okay, if you could travel to any city in the world, all expenses paid just to explore that, ci that city's bookstores and vlog about it, what city would it be? That would be amazing. Um, if I was primarily focused on the vlogging aspect, I would probably say New York or London just because those are the two cities that I've been to that I think just have like the coolest book store cultures. In terms of like purely just like, hey, you get an all expense paid trip somewhere. I don't know. There's so many places I want to go right now. I think I would, you know, I went to Austria and Germany last year and really, really enjoyed that. And I would like to go back. So maybe I would say Munich or Vienna. I don't know. Like if I'm just traveling for fun or I mean, I'm obsessed with Italy. I, every time I go, I fall more in love. So like, let's just say Sorrento. I don't know if there's any book stores there, but if there are, I'd be happy to uh, explore them and vlog about it. And then uh, she also asked, what's one author on your reading bucket list? Ooh, that's a good question. Somebody who I've not read yet that I really want to. You know, I'm gonna say Anne Bronte. There, She has um, The Tenant of Wildfeld Hall and she has one other one, I think, Agnes Gray. I love Charlotte Bronte so much and I've heard like, oh, Anne Bronte is so underrated. Like her books are so great and they're so interesting and they have such interesting feminist ideas. So she's definitely somebody that I really wanna get to and like, dig in. Me, Simone, and I, and Brian's bookshelves both asked, which authors would you like to meet most one living, one dead? I think I've answered this in a tag before, so I'll just use the same answers I used there, which was uh, dead Agatha Christie, duh, right? I mean, I guess Charlotte Bronte also, but like, I've spent so much time at this point in, in recent months thinking about Agatha Christie, I would love to meet her. And one living, I'm gonna go with Courtney Milan because she is just such an, I mean, she's a really interesting person on Twitter. She is a romance author who used to clerk for the Supreme Court and like 
has been a uh, major voice in a um, Me Too movement in um, some of like the upper echelons of uh, federal judges that are here in the US. She um, was speaking out against a federal judge who was like apparently a serial predator. So I just have a lot of respect for her in terms of like her outspokenness. I love like what a sharp person she is, what a sharp lady she is. So I would love to hang out with her and like pick her brain. I definitely, I, even if you don't like romance, she's just an interesting person. I definitely recommend following her on Twitter. Okay, The May Cave says, have you always read at the pace you do now? Do you see a difference in yourself and your reading habits from now compared to before booktube? I definitely read faster now post grad school like i learned to read very quickly in grad school like you you have to to survive I, i've always been a quick like a pretty fast reader but like i essentially learned how to speed read um so i can get through things pretty quickly um so i definitely read faster now than i used to and um i think i've gotten good at understanding when i need to slow down and when i don't like i think learning to read very quickly um, liberates you in terms of knowing when it's worth it to really slow down versus when you will get just as much out of it if you keep things moving. So I do read a little bit faster. Do I see a difference in myself now from before booktube? I think being on booktube makes me more aware of my choices. So like while I've always been an omnivore, I think I'm even more deliberate about trying to mix things up. Um, since I know that I'm gonna be talking about it with people <laughs> um, because I want to give you guys variety and I want to like not just I mean I'm, I'm a mood reader so sometimes yes I get in the mood and like I dive deep on something and like that's just how it goes but in general like I want to be someplace that I'm, I'm reading a pretty good variety that I can talk to you guys about so I, I do think it probably has made me more conscious of that and more deliberate in my choices. Emily Boivin O'Neill um, says who's your favorite mystery author and why? It's a really easy one, Agatha Christie, because she's the best and I just adore her. Uh, I mean, I do actually think she's the best mystery author ever, but also I just love her, so color me biased. Okay, and then finally, sorry, I feel like I've been talking for a really long time. <laughs> um, uh, three questions about Agatha Christie. So first, Dane reads, whose life, this is an awesome question, whose life would you prefer to live, Agatha Christie's or Miss Markle's? Bearing in mind, you'll either be known as an interfering old pussy and rarely leave, rarely leave St. Mary Mead's, or you'll have to put up with all of Archie's bullshit. <laughs> So if you don't know, Dane and I read um, Agatha Christie's autobiography together, I think in April, um, and her her husbands were unfortunate and like full of BS. So here's the thing. If I'm still me, but I'm in their lives, I'm totally going to be Agatha Christie because like, I, let's put it this way, I would have no problem telling Archie where to stuff it. And I wouldn't have married him in the first place. I would have married that other guy she was about to marry who seemed like a goddamn delight. So... If I was still me, but just in her, like, if we, like, did, like, uh, parent trap style, like, swapped lives kind of thing, I, w I would swap with Agatha. If I have to actually be one of them, I would be Miss Marple because she's the bomb. And, like, yeah, she rarely leaves St. Mary Mead's, but, like, she is the queen bee of that town. Okay, Lorraine Mick ask apart from Agatha Christie have you read any other golden age fiction if so do you have any good book recommendations yes I have and I want to read more I think once I get through all of my Agatha Christie rereading age um, I will have more time and space to do that um, the number one person I would recommend is Dorothy Sayers I absolutely love Dorothy Sayers she was somebody I thought about doing some PhD work on this is why I never did a PhD because I had like 10 different ideas um, she is super interesting side note Fun fact about Dorothy Sayers, she was also in advertising and she is the one who came up with the tagline, my goodness, my Guinness. Um, she is super, she's a super interesting lady. But anyway, her books are also really interesting. They're, they're golden age detective fiction that are also kind of novels of manners. So think like Agatha Christie plus Jane Austen and that equals Dorothy Sayers. The best thing she wrote was Gaudy Night. It's a great book. I also really like The Busman's Honeymoon. So definitely recommend that. Um, I've not read any Josephine Tay yet. She is on my, my TBR. And then I have read a little bit of Nageo Marsh, um, who is a golden age writer um, in New Zealand. I can't say that I love those. Like they're good, they're fun. Like if you're looking just for something enjoyable, totally. Do I think that they're as good as Dorothy Sayers or Agatha Christie? I don't, but I do think that they're perfectly enjoyable and it's kind of fun to have like a different like country that they're set in. So if you're um, interested in reading something like New Zealandy, there you go. And then finally, Brie Hill again, 
Crushing the game, Brie. Um, if you could interview Agatha Christie, what would be the top two questions you'd ask? I think I would ask her, first of all, why she kept writing Poirot books when she clearly didn't like him anymore. Because, like, was it purely just because of, like, the money situation? Did she feel, like, obligated to her fans? Like, I would I would be interested to hear, like, why she kept writing him past basically the 40s, because she clearly hated him. So I would ask her that. And then I think I would probably ask her something about like feminism and like how she sees herself because like I think one of the most interesting things from her autobiography is realizing that she so clearly sees herself as a housewife first and a writer second. And she has some really interesting kind of like interrogations of feminism in her work and like commentary on evolving gender roles and things like that. So I would love to just basically like unpack that with her a little bit of like, how do you see women and like, in in your lifetime like do you think it was good or bad some of the things that changed for women so yeah those are all the cues for me to a um thank you guys so much for asking i was completely like i'll probably get like three questions and this will be super quick i'm sorry this i feel like i was talking for a really long time so i apologize if this is a long video now getting to the giveaway so i actually i don't have the books here yet but i've ordered um a little a little sampling a little grab bag of five books that i think you've either heard me talk a lot about on this channel or represent um some of the things that i like to read so if you're interested in getting a little grab bag leave me a comment below either something that you you've enjoyed on the channel and you'd like to see more of or answering one of the questions on here that is interesting to you so leave me a comment if you want to be entered i will have the details for the rules in the description box. Rules like that will be below. This will be open internationally because I have been international before and know that it sucks when you can't get entered into these things. So this is international. Um, this is going up on a Tuesday. I will close this on Tuesday, July 3rd at 10 p.m. Central sure and i will announce the winner on july 4th on twitter and instagram so that is where i will announce the winner and then you get in contact with me i've never done this before i'm sure we'll, we'll figure this out but anyway um if you're interested in doing that definitely leave me a comment below and um yeah i'm just super thankful guys and um i hope this was a small way of, of letting you guys know how thankful i am and how much i enjoy i just really enjoy you guys like i enjoy interacting with you i enjoy making these videos and hearing your comments and meeting people like this is just such fun for me. So thank you so much. And I think that will do it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, which will be important if you want to win. You will need to know what that is. So, but yeah, I think that will do it. I hope you guys are having a super great day and I will talk to you later. Bye.